Hello everyone and welcome back to the Spanish Sling, a podcast where we try to bridge the gap between the Spanish and Singaporean companies and encourage economic relations between them. Today we're going to focus on one of our most precious resources that we most of the time take for granted, water. This is why we welcome today to the Spanish Sling Javier Suárez. Good morning. Uh, South Asia Technical Services and Development Leader at DuPont Water Solutions. Correct. So Javier, in the first part of the interview, we're going to focus on the water challenges in Southeast Asia. But before that, I want to have a more global perspective of the topic. I want to ask you two kind of questions that kind of keep us awake all night. <laughs> so do you think that water will become a commodity in the near future? Yeah. So first of all, good morning, uh, Clara, and thank you very much for having me here. Um, yeah, that's a very interesting question to start with. I think this is a topic, as you said, that uh, sparks a lot of debate and controversy. Mm -hmm. First of all, we, we need to take into account water is a, is a human right. This is uh, it's recognized by the United Nations as a human right. So uh, based on that, um, you see, that, um, it's, does it doesn't make sense to uh, pay for a, such a good that is essential for life without mm -hmm. water? We cannot live. So that's yeah. it. does it make sense to pay or to make profit out of, out of something that is so so essential? So the problem here resides on I would say some misconception, and is that the, the water is uh, is free and the water is abundant, like the air we breathe. It is not the case anymore. So the water is very limited. It's a finite resource. Um, we you know the population is growing. We are depleting the water resources. It's becoming more polluted. So uh, it's, it's, it's a, as you said, it's a, it's a big problem. So um, another thing, um, you see, the water is not typically in the right place where, the, where it is needed or it is not of the right quality. Mm -hmm. So we need to collect the water, to treat the water, purify the water mm -hmm. and deliver to the population. So it's a, it has some cost. So who is paying for the cost? So does it make sense that everyone uses the, the, the water you know, um, as much as they like. Mm -hmm. How we encourage people to, to have a more sustainable um, use of the water. That's where you know, all this debate or uh, concept about you know, water about service or commodity uh, comes. And many, in many places this is, uh, this is accepted, right? Mm -hmm. if you, you know, it's something that is valuable, so yeah. you, need, you need to, to pay for it. But you see, I mean, if you ask me, as many things in life, at the end, this needs to be like an equilibrium, a balance. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to look for ways where, you, you see, uh, on, on the one hand, it's economic efficient. On the other hand, you need to take care also of the, you know, uh, to look at the social justice uh, side. No, no, not everyone can afford uh, water. Um, so we, governments, are, you know, they need to make sure everyone has access to water. So community, water as a community could be, you know, be at that point where, you know, all the basic needs are satisfied. I mean, if you want to have a jacuzzi at home, well, it doesn't make sense that you pay the same as, you know, to water that you use for, for basic purposes, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Yeah. So it has to be something, uh, again, um, in between. Yes. So we have to find a balance. It's so interesting for me to discover that water is a fundamental right. The human rights. Yes. It so, is. so we have that that we have to really protect and really provide the resources for that. But we have also to be kind of rational and understand that water is it's not on costly. the place exactly. It's, it's costly. So we have to yeah. find yeah. this balance. Yes. So um, you have talked about. Uh, I have you have mentioned like water shortage and the problems that we'll have yes. in the future. Do you think, Javier, that we will have a really, I mean, a real water shortage okay. in our in our lifetime? Okay. So I have bad news for you in that for that topic. God, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> water shortage is something that is affecting already all continents, everywhere. Uh, I mean, obviously not at the same level, all the countries or yeah. region, uh, uh, regions or countries that are suffering more. Singapore, we are importing water. More than 50% of the water we need in Singapore is imported from Malaysia. So water, when we talk about water scarcity or water stress, that means that the, um, the demand of the water that you, uh, you have in the country or region is higher than your availability of fresh mm -hmm. sources. Yeah. Singapore is important water. Without this uh, um, water being imported, we will have a big problem. Yeah. Spain, many areas of Spain, uh, they suffer water scarcity. You remember the, all these conflicts we had in the past with the 
the Tajo Segura transfer, the Euro transfer, you yeah. know, regions. Uh, I, I am from Tajo, so I know the, yes, the, the problem with the Euro transfer. People fighting for, for the water, um, you know, especially in the Mediterranean area. Mm. Um, you know, my best place, Canary Islands, some of the islands, Fuerteventura, Lanzarote, Gran Canaria, uh, we rely on seawater desalination for, mm. to, for, for water supply. Uh, otherwise, there is no possibility to, to, to live there. So what is scarcity is there? So I, I will give you some, uh, some facts and let me extend a little bit here. You see, 70% of our planet is water. That's why we are called blue planet. Mm -hmm. uh, but for this, this water, 98% is seawater. So we cannot use this as drinking water. Right? The rest, 2%, most of that is um, even, uh, frozen, like yeah. ice caps, uh, snow, mm -hmm. or what is called the permafrost. Uh, some water is very deep inside underground that cannot be reached. So there is only, uh, if you see the lakes and, and, and rivers, which is you know the really uh, available water, fresh water as it's called, is only 0.3% of the water in the world. So if you imagine this glass of water is the total water in the world, 0.3%, maybe just a few drops in the bottom. So it, 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 it is a scarce. So, um, Another fact, the, the amount of water in the world is constant. You know, the same amount of water we have today is what we had millions of years ago. It's, it's, it's unchanged, mm -hmm. right? But the population is growing. So we are now, I think, 7.8 billion people. In 2050, will be 10 billion people. So more people for the same amount of fresh water, but even it is more contaminated. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so we, it, it's, it's a problem that will only become worse. So we need, but uh, we will discuss later. Not, not a problem. There's a solution for this, but uh, but water scarcity is is a is a fact uh, already, and it uh, will become worse. I mean, many um, it is said that the cities. I mean, you don't have to look at um, underdeveloped uh, world like Africa or Middle East. They have also water scarcity. But cities like London, it is said that in at, at the pace of progress now, in 10, 20 years, they will run out of water. Wow. You know how to look at the you know the third world. It's uh, even you know Moscow, uh, Cairo, Jakarta here. All these mm -hmm. cities are examples of cities that will be will run out of water if uh, they don't do anything. Well, so for, for me, what is really important is that we have to educate ourselves in a way and listen to the facts that you have provided, because most of the times we're not aware of the real impact that we have. And I mean, for example, just this uh, example of the the tiny drops that we have. So Very it makes well, yeah. it really aware of the, the scarcity, I mean, the, the scarce resource that is water, and that we have to really help tackle this, this problem, all of us, not just companies like yourself and the government, but it's, a, it's a human responsibility in a way. Right. Yeah. And you have mentioned Singapore, but what are the challenges in Southeast Asia? Yeah, so in general, uh, maybe we, when I talk about Southeast Asia, I live apart Singapore. We can talk about Singapore later because that's an exceptional country in this uh, topic. But in general, you know, Southeast Asia is a very uh, fast-growing region mm -hmm. with all the problems that that that, uh, that brings. I mean, um, overpopulation, yeah. uh, very high uh, rate of uh, under industrialization, industrialization uh, mm -hmm. urbanization. Um, uh, you know, water become uh, polluted. On top of that, if you consider also the governments are, you know, this in general a very poor uh, management of water resources, mm -hmm. uh, very low investment in water infrastructure, very lax uh, regulation on water discharge. I mean, it's not the priority right now when you are in growing phase. Uh, this is something that naturally will come later, mm -hmm. but at the moment it's not a priority. So these are the challenges in, in, in South Asia that, uh, you know, most of the countries in South Asia, it is not safe to, to drink water from the tap. Right? Uh, it's very common to have some domestic device to, to you know, so under, I think under it's the just scene. in Singapore where we can have drinking water straight from the tap. Yes, so. correct. So that, that's the thing. So Singapore is an exceptional uh, country. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a global leader in, in terms of water treatment uh, and water management. It is, you know, 100% of the population here will have access to uh, clean water, as you said, Water from the tap is perfectly safe to drink here. Mm -hmm. They uh, recycle 100% of the waste and reuse it. And by the way, we can talk about that later if you like. But the waste water, treated waste water, is also uh, sent back to the reservoir. You know, these 17 reservoirs we have in the country, and it is uh, can be used for for drinking water. Mm -hmm. But the water you are taking taking uh, from the from the tap, mm -hmm. uh, part of it. Could be coming from treated wastewater, but it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Singapore is very, you know, very 
it has very strict regulations and it's uh, very safe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's an exception uh, compared to the rest of the uh, neighborhood uh, country. I mean, if we include Australia, Australia is very advanced as well in, mm -hmm. in water management. Uh, yeah. So we have a lot of work to do and a lot of um, water solutions to provide in, in this part of the, the, can, the, 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 the world, the, in a way. But uh, yes. so we have to talk about kind of this, um, what well, kind of developing communities and um, governments are more focused on the, the kind of the first um, step of growing. So the first step of growing is organization and industrialization. But how about Europe? What are the challenges? Because I guess it's not another completely, it's completely different. different. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the, the, in the other side of the, of the range. Of course, yeah. I mean, Europe is a more mature uh, uh, region. We have mm -hmm. gone all through this process already. Uh, you know, as comparison in Europe, in most of the countries, you can drink water from the from the tap directly, perfectly safe. Uh, uh, over ninety percent of the wastewater is recycled, compared to here in Southeast Asia, is less than fifteen percent. Mm -hmm. So, in general, there's a uh, you know there's a higher awareness of water security, water quality from governments, industries, uh, public uh, population. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a a set of uh, very solid established regulations on water yeah. quality standards, yeah. water discharge um, that the in industry have to, to comply with. So it's, uh, but it doesn't mean that everything is shining and, and golden. Obviously, uh, Europe also has the same challenges of population growth, mm -hmm. climate change. You know, we have witnessing we have been witnessing some of these things happening uh, lately. Um, Again, industrialization, more intensive agriculture, all these are the same challenges here, but at, mm -hmm. at least in terms of uh, water security and compliance with regulation is, is a, a more advanced phase compared to, yeah. to this. Well, question. but there's still room for improvement, so we'll yes. have to, to focus on that. Yes. And in, in that way, I want to talk about companies like yours. So how can companies like yours, like DuPont, for example, can help providing different water solutions? Very good. So uh, yeah, uh, Dupont in particular, the, the business line of uh, where I work uh, for uh, Dupont Water Solution. Basically, mm -hmm. we uh, we provide advanced technologies, very innovative technologies to for solve to solve water challenges from you know very um, complex situation wastewater to very uh, clean mm -hmm. uh, pure water. So we we are focusing this conversation of uh, about drinking water, but. Uh, Actually, there's many applications for, for water treatment, right? In fact, uh, you know, for the, the water, the fresh water is used mainly for irrigation. It's like 70% is used for irrigation, 20% for industry use, and only 10% is for, for human consumption. So mm -hmm. the industry have a wide range of applications. So obviously, it's not the same, you know, the quality you need to, to achieve for drinking water um, uh, is not the same as uh, industry, for example, that the manufacturers, semiconductors, need mm -hmm. from uh, yeah. chips. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we provide a wide, a wide range of, uh, of technologies um, and, and, yeah, and help to these uh, municipalities and, and industries to, uh, to uh, operate more efficiently and more sustainable in the, in the water treatment operation. Yeah, fantastic. And so just to conclude the, the first part, we have talked about education and that we as a society, we have the responsibility to, to educate ourselves. But to, to kind of shed a little hope <laughs> to conclude this interview, do you think that and in which way can companies and government can come together and kind of reduce and tackle this tremendous problem? Yeah. Well, not only they can, they should. I mean, first, the government for sure, they, they should be uh, ultimately the, the accountable, responsible for uh, guaranteeing uh, access to clean, affordable um, and reliable water to, mm -hmm. to, the, to the population and to, to set some, uh, we mentioned before, some set of uh, regulations about the uh, water, um, drinking water standard or water discharge. Uh, industry, for co of course, they also they need to first to stick to this regulation, to make sure they stick to this regulation, but also they need to, to find ways to reduce the, what is called the uh, water footprint in the operation, to reduce mm -hmm. the amount of water they, they use. Uh, this is probably you have heard this incredible, you know, to, to get one cup of coffee, uh, we need over 100 liters of water just to produce one, 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 one uh, cup of coffee. The t-shirt we, we are wearing, yes. it, it spend like 3000 liters mm. each to, to get to produce. So industries are, are trying to reduce this water uh, um, footprint. And, and fortunately, many corporations, global corporations, they, they are very sensitive about this. 
uh, and the, they are working on this, not only because um, this is the right way, to, uh, the right thing to do, but because the consumer, the shareholders are demanding that more and more. Yeah. So, um, you know, use as much as less possible of water, as less water as possible and discharge as less water as possible. This is the objective of, of the, the company. Then companies like, um, you know, DuPont, obviously we have to follow that in our own operation we try to reduce as well the the, the water footprint uh, but in our case we provide these technologies this advanced technology that help those other industries to, to reduce the uh, the water footprint and to operate more efficiently uh, with you know with lower energy consumption lower chemical consumption with you know uh, longer durability of the technology this is how we can help these other industries as well but as you mentioned it's not only industries and government everything start, starts from ourselves mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things that we can do at yeah. domestic level to reduce the water footprint and help to uh, to, to fight this uh, water scarcity mm -hmm. you know, we have heard you know like you can take a shorter shower showers you can use uh, flow restrictors in the tap mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, you know when you uh, brush your teeth, don't leave the tap, exactly. uh, tap open uh, and you can find ways to recycle water at home like when you are washing fruits or vegetables you can maybe collect this water and use it for uh, gardening uh, mm -hmm. or to water in the plants at, at your home. There's so many things, I mean, if you google it, it's a long list of things you can do at, 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 at home. Um, but most importantly, we need to educate our children mm -hmm. about this, I mean because they, uh, at the end Ultimately, they are the ones that are going to suffer more in the future because this again, this can only become worse. Mm -hmm. Water will always be needed, but uh, as we may discuss, yeah, it's, it's getting the more and more scarce. So, so they are the ones who are going to suffer more. So, we need to educate the kids from the from now of uh, importance yeah. of water. Right? Yes. So, I mean, governments and companies. I mean, do have to be responsible, but also they have to have the obligation to, to contribute to this problem. And of course, society as a whole, we have to educate ourselves, educate our children and the future generations. And of course, kind of, kind of provide this kind of pressure to companies and governments to kind of accelerate the, the water solution. Right. So thank you very much, Javier, for all the ideas right. you provided. I think you, you have, I mean, I have a lot of information, I'm sure our audience as well, that we have to think about and really try to help tackle this problem. So thank you very much, Javier. Thank you, Karen. Thank you very much.